Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Good Owl Games, the place where I love to give you two player insights into some great games for game night. And here's five things I think you need to know about delving deep into the dark depths of the, well, abyss. <laughs> Abyss is set in the dark depths of the ocean, in which you're trying to gather power to gain the throne. During the game you'll bid to gather factions to your side, and use them to acquire powerful lords to your tableau. There are also locations to make your factions more powerful for the end of the game. Could you manage to claim the throne of the abyss? Thing one, what's this game all about? So abyss focuses on the struggle for power as you're trying to claim the throne. And what you're doing is you're gathering different factions and different lords to your side um, so that you can emerge victorious. What's interesting here is this is all done in an underwater setting, so the different factions are all different underwater creatures, um, and you also have pearls for currency to boot. What's interesting here, I suppose, is the fact that really this game could have been about anything, but I do feel like there's more to it than just that, because the mechanics do fit really well with the theme at the same time. You do feel like you're gathering power. Similar games to this. For some reason, I'm reminded of something like Libertalia, um, simply because you're trying to get specific cards into your tableau that have particular powers to enhance your gameplay or score at the end of the game. Um, but I do feel like Abyss sets itself apart with its bidding mechanism, which I'm going to talk about next. Thing two, what kind of actions are you going to be performing on your turn? So Abyss is really centered around tableau building, some hand management and a bidding auction mechanic. And what you're trying to do is these Lord cards here down the bottom are what you're trying to get into play because they are worth victory points and they have special abilities as well. To be able to play them, you're going to need support from their faction with the faction cards and they are corresponding in color here. And you need the numerical value of those cards to be enough to be able to purchase these. So how are you going to do this? So the first thing you might want to do is get these faction cards and you can do this by starting an auction. So what you do is you reveal the first card of the deck which in this case is three of crab. And everyone else gets to decide if they want to buy that card before you do. It goes around the table and they pay for it with pearls. Yeah, pearls is the currency. And you will get that money if someone else buys your card. All right, but it's not so terrible if somebody does because you're able to keep going here. It doesn't stop just after one card. So you can reveal another if no one buys that one. You could pick up some three of tentacles, um, get the idea so it passes around the table. The good news is, is that if you don't like any of the cards being revealed, that is a lot of tentacles, lots of tentacles, not as good. You stop here at the last one. This is as far as you can go and you have to take this card, but you also get a pearl for your troubles, which isn't so bad. But what happens to these cards is what's interesting. So these are, most of these are the same type, unfortunately. So these are all three tentacles. Lots of tentacles and the tentacles are going to go down into this section here, all of them upside down into a pile and the crab one will go here. And so the second action you can do that might get you cards is you are able to take a single pile of cards from this section. So I could take all of these blue cards and I might know exactly what they were, depending on what you're collecting. So the ways to get cards are go bid auction for them or dig them out of these piles if available. And then the third thing you're probably want to go to do on your turn when you have enough cards of the right type. So let's say I take this pile here for my action. Then next action I might take when it comes back around to me is that, okay, this guy here wants tentacles. So I will pay 10 of tentacles to pick him up. So you play the different cards from your hand. Six and four makes 10, three and three, six. So that's how you pay for him. He'll come into play and then I'll get whatever ability is on him. Um, and then you keep the lowest number of these cards for end game scoring. That's not really important right now, but we're being thorough. 
right? And then the rest go away and you can keep everything else in your hand. Now, the fun thing you need to know about the Lords and the end game scoring, and the one thing I haven't mentioned yet is locations, which are listed over here. And how this works is, so you see this character has a key. I know it's small, um, but number of, number of the characters will have keys. And once you have three of those keys, you pick a location. And the locations are kind of end game scoring. They're bonuses for things you'll have in play. And you'll take one and you'll put it into play. And it will cover up all of your character's abilities. You're not going to be able to see this but they sit over your character's abilities. Um, and so they lose them, they don't get to use them for the rest of the game, but you do have end game scoring. So it's something to think about, this push and pull of deciding, well, when do I want to get some kind of victory points set on the table? And when do I want to lose the abilities that my Lords have? So that's a bit, that's how you play it. It's really interesting and interactive and I've not explained everything here, but I've done my best. Um, so I hope it gives you an idea of what kind of things you'd be doing on your turn. Thing three on the table. So I feel like the game board actually really sets the tone for the game. It's this really dark and gloomy amphitheater. And of course everything is dark and gloomy under the sea. Um, so it's quick to set this one up. It's got a nice insert that helps. And it's a medium sized game. It's got a big game board in the middle and a little bit extra. But of course each of your own tableaus takes up space as well. So it's not huge but it's not small either. Um, it takes 40 minutes for two of us to play. And the rule book was good as well. Now, replayability, um, this really just comes from the variety of lords you might want to choose from or those locations um, that give you bonuses at the end of the game. But otherwise, it's just kind of more of the same good stuff that you're used to each time you play. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? Well, in my mind, Abyss is a really stunning game and this all starts with the box art. It's very arresting, it's very kind of striking, isn't it? And while I do wish that it, you know, told us a little bit more about what the game was about, um, I do think this choice to put basically art on the cover um, is one that really works. This is a game you would face out on your board game shelves as opposed to tucking away. Now, this art continues on onto all the Lord cards, and these are lovely, like this is the only word for it. They're just, they're dark, they're haunting, but they're colorful at the same time. I, I found them really intriguing. And each faction has their own set of colors and their own kind of look to go with them. Um, I really liked it a lot, and I found myself looking forward to seeing new Lord cards as they were revealed, just to see what the art was going to be like. Component wise, well, there's not much to talk about here, but you do have pearls as currency and there are little pearls and they have their own little clam box that you can keep them in while you play. And all the cardboard in that is thick and chunky. Like overall, this game is just beautifully put together and it's the kind of thing that looks good on the table and good on your shelf. Thing five, is this game actually any good? So Abyss isn't a new game. It's been around since 2014. And I've known about it for a while and heard good things, but I kind of assumed that because it had a bidding mechanism that it wouldn't be great at two players, that it was the kind of game that needed a group to be good. Um, and I'm here to tell you how wrong I was about that. Um, while this is an older game, it doesn't feel like that. I think all the mechanisms feel really fresh and interesting. I don't feel like I've seen anything quite like this. And I'm going to start with talking about this bidding mechanism because it's the thing I think I was so hung up on beforehand. And what's cool about this one is that you don't always get exactly what you want. There are consequences to your actions. So for sure you can go and, and, and buy a card that your opponent wanted to buy, but you have to give them a pearl instead. And that might come back to bite you in the ass at some point later. There's also the idea that you get to pick your opponent's card first, which is really interesting and unusual. Um, and I suppose you see that balances out because everyone gets to do that, but you don't always get a what you want immediately. And then of course there's the fact that the, the cards that aren't used for bidding or that nobody takes get to go into their own special piles that you can pick up later. And that is also should factor into your planning a little bit. Where do all the leftover cards end up? So there's lots going on here. It's a very dynamic phase, to be honest. Um, and normally I'm not a huge fan of bidding, but this one's really interesting and different. The other thing I found odd, <laughs> or that definitely kind of piped my interest, is the fact that once you get three keys onto your Lords, that their abilities go away. And so you're left with the decision of, do I want to get stuff that gives me points at the end of the game, or do I want to continue getting bonuses now? And I think that's a really tough dilemma sometimes, especially if you're focusing on just picking up lords, you are encouraged to basically focus on end game instead. Um, and so I found this really unusual, but also kind of interesting to play with. 
Also, I've played this with two and three players and I'm pleased to announce that it runs just as smoothly with three as it does with two. It's got a very timely ending with that playing of the Seventh Lord. I always found I was just wondering when the game was going to end and there we have it, the game ends. So I think that's really nice as well. Overall, this was a pleasant surprise. It's a beautiful game with some great mechanics, fun gameplay and some lovely player interaction. It's a complete standout. Do I think you should have Abyss in your collection? I think if you want some fun player interaction and some exciting bidding rounds, then you probably should take a deep dive into the Abyss. You've been watching Good Owl Games. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you have any comments or queries you'd like to make about Abyss, why not shout them off in the comment box below? I'd love to hear from you. So tune in again next time for some more short and hopefully informative board game reviews.